Hi, everybody. It's time for another fun with STEM. So let's have some fun. Today, we are making a circuit flower. So a circuit is an electrical uh, system that will light a light bulb, ring a bell, ring a buzzer. So we're going to learn a little bit about circuitry and chromatography. So big words. All right. Well, I hope you have your paper that you can print out from our website right underneath fun with our full steam ahead. I almost said almost down. Full steam ahead. That's what this is. Full steam ahead for the summer. Okay. So you are going to need a coffee filter or two or three or four, depending on how many you want to make. Let me just step over here because I will need something else. I'm getting paper towels just so I don't get messy. Okay. You are going to need washable markers. So I've got some washable markers here in different colors, probably colors that are not red or yeah, red, blue, or yellow are best. So anything but red, blue, or yellow, but you can use red, blue, and yellow. It still makes a pretty flower. Okay. So some markers and you're going to need some wire. Chenille stick, a plate, water, an eyedropper, LED, okay? This is an LED light, All right? Look a little bit funny. A clothespin, a coin battery, or a button battery, as some people call them about the size of a coin, some scissors, which I don't have with me, but I don't think I'm going to need them because I actually have my wire strippers instead. You're going to need some kind of tape, floral tape, electrical tape. This one I'm using electrical tape and oops, something to put your flower in. So I've got a little clay pot. And I'm going to show you the finished product. See, it's glowing. Can you see that? And we'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to put that down here. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is take a plate or something that's washable. And you're going to flatten your coffee filter down on that. Let me move some of these things down so I don't knock them off and then wonder what the heck I'm doing. And then you're going to take your washable markers and you're going to choose a color for the center. And you're just going to make a circle. Okay. But you want it to be wider than that. So kind of color around it, make it a little bit wider. We don't need the very center part of it to be colored in. You'll see why. Okay, so I made my circle a little bit thicker. Now I'm going to go to another color, go to purple, and I'm going to leave white space in between. Now you can, after you make your first circle, if you want to do a design, the first one that I did, I kind of did some designs on it that radiate out from the uh, coffee filter. Sorry, words are hard. And my circles aren't perfect. Don't worry, your circles don't have to be perfect either. This is just a fun way. This is part of the chromatography. Now chromatography, um, You'll see how the colors might separate into other colors or they'll just spread out. Okay, I think the next color I'm going to do, and maybe I'll do squiggles around the edge. Uh, no, I'll just, I'll keep doing circles. I'll show you um, one that I did with the circle in the middle and then I did some designs around the, the outside. So you just... Continue making your circle. 
and they can get thinner if you want, or they can get thicker if you want, but you just have to leave white space in between. I have one more color, so I'll do this one. This is orange. So you can do as many colors as you want. You just have to remember, you need to leave white space in between the colors. Okay. Right. So it looks like this. Now, you can do a spray bottle where you spray it, but you just want to spray it right in the center. But I'm going to do my eyedropper. You can even take a teaspoon if you don't have an eyedropper or a spray bottle. But we just want to put this right in the middle. I'm just gonna, probably going to take about, if you're using an eyedropper, maybe three squirts. Okay. And then you want to get the coffee filter to lay down a little bit. So you want to keep pushing it down. And I'll show you. Whoops. There, see, I need my paper towel. You can see how the colors are starting to go out. Okay, I'm going to put a little more since I dribbled the water off the off of my paper there. Put some more water in the middle here so that it starts to spread out. And you're going to want to let this dry. Okay. So maybe a flatter uh, plate would do better. But all I had was a paper plate. So but you just want that to start going all the way out to the edge and taking those colors with it. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside. And because I actually prepared this time, <laughs> I've got one ready to go. Okay, I want to put the lid on my water so I don't spill that. Okay. So I'm going to let that go and spread out. <laughs> so here you can see this is the one where I did a circle of green, and then I did some squigglies of purple. I made some V's with the orange, and then I put dots with the, the pink. So it comes out different each time. I think even if you would do the same design, it'll come out a little differently. You can use whatever colors you want. So that's the coffee filter. Okay, now we're going to try to make a circuit, okay? So for this, you're going to need two pieces of wire about eight inches long. Mine are, one's a little bit longer than the other. You're going to need your LED light and your button battery or your coin battery, okay? The first thing you wanna do is test your light. So, okay, it's not lighting up, so I'm going to turn it around and there it is. My light lights up. Okay, so you want to make sure that your battery is good and the LED light is good. All right. So now we are going to, and this might be something your big person would do for you. Um, wire strippers are nice because look at that. It took the plastic end of that wire right off. You don't need a, a real long piece. That's about an inch. This one's a little bit longer, but that's fine. So after we get that done, we're going to take the coffee filter. That's dry. And scrunch it up to make that flower. 
Okay. And you're going to give, give it a good twist. Okay. So you have like a little stem. Now this part is a little bit harder. You're going to take your LED light and you don't want to go down through the stem. You kind of want to go on the side of it. Okay. So you're just going to poke a little hole. Like I said, easier said than done. It's amazing how strong coffee filters actually are. Got one through. Okay, you see how I got the two wires through? See them right here? Okay, now we're ready to go on to the next step. Make sure that LED is down in there. Okay, Oop, lost my wire. All right, so you're going to take one end. Now you can twist these together, but I think I found that the easiest thing to do is to bend over the end of the wires. This one bends real easy because it's a really thin wire. Kind of hook them together and then twist them, okay? This one's a little fatter wire, so I'm going to crimp it, which just means smush it together so that they stay. And if it falls off, don't worry. The first one I did kind of fell off. Just picked it up and hooked it back on. Okay. So that's hooked onto there. Now I'm going to do the other side, bend the one end, and this end a little bit. You don't want the two wires on the opposite ends of the uh, light to touch each other. So. You have to be careful when you're twisting, too. You don't want to break the legs off. Okay. Crimp that down. Cut that off. It's sticking out a little bit too much. All right. Now comes another tough part. I know, I'm making this really difficult. But it makes a beautiful little arrangement. Should have done this for Mother's Day. Huh? All right, so we've got our two wires on there. Now, we are going to have to turn my paper over. Take your clothespin and the end that you pinched to make it open, you're going to put between those two legs. So this is where you need to get the tape. And electrical tape likes to stick to itself. It doesn't really like to stick to other things. It's really annoying sometimes. So you're gonna take one leg. That's what these are called, legs. And tape that to the inside. Okay, so I've got one leg taped on, and the other leg is going to get taped to the outside of that same part of the clothespin. Like I said, words are hard. Okay. We're just going to secure that to make sure that it stays on I didn't need such a long piece of electrical tape but it is what it is okay so that's taped on and we've got our two wires 
Okay. So these are even a little bit long, but we'll deal, we'll, we'll work with it. So I'm going to wrap my wires around. Still have to be able to open this, so don't wrap them too tightly. Just want to get it so that that skinned part can be on the inside on one side. Okay. And the other one is going to be on the other side. Now you don't want to tape these down. Why? Because you need to put your battery in between. Right? I'm actually going to have this come in from the other side. All right. So I've got one piece of wire. On one side, and the other piece of wire on the other side. Now, we're going to put our button battery here. It didn't light up, so we have it backwards. So, turn it around. And there's our lit up flower. Put it with our other flower here. Okay. To finish this off, if you want to, you can take your chenille stick, which, what happened? I lost my chenille stick. Oh, here it is. You can take the chenille stick and kind of cover up that ugly black tape. Make it look prettier. You don't want to wrap it around. I guess you could wrap it around both because you can still get the... Okay. You stick that in your pot. And you get a couple of those and you'll have a nice little centerpiece and when you don't want it to light up anymore to save the battery and the light you just take your battery out okay. now how does it work okay so the first part was the chromatography and um so we use what are called secondary and tertiary colors not the primary the primary colors are red blue and yellow that's what makes up all of the other colors. So if you use the secondary colors, which are ones that are mixed together, like red and yellow make orange and red and blue make purple and yellow and blue make green. So those are the, the secondary colors. Then you can mix a primary and a secondary color together to make a tertiary. So that's what makes all of the colors. All right. So primary is the, the three. Okay. And then the secondary are the ones when you mix those three to get new colors. And tertiary is when you mix e either primary with the secondary or mix the secondaries together and you get tertiary. I know these are a lot of big words that I'm spitting up, but anyway, so um, as the colors separate, they're creating gorgeous patterns on the paper, on that uh, coffee filter. So um, the colors might separate in certain, uh, when, when you use certain products, certain types of ink. Uh, it can't be permanent ink because permanent doesn't, separate it has to be water-based and that's what we did so let me show you what oh, this one's been sitting kind of long <laughs> i should have picked it up but you can see how all the colors move to the edge of this that looks real pretty around the edges i probably should have picked this up before this point, and it would have been, there would have been more color in the middle. But I kind of like that around the edges. I'm gonna put this on another plate so it can dry a little bit more. Okay, so in chromatography, you're watching how those colors will separate, and they might even separate back into their primary colors. So it's pretty cool. If you wanna try and experiment, take a black water based 
marker, so a washable marker, and scribble a line and then put some water and watch the water creep away and you will see some colors coming out of black. So the the particles in the um, paper come from trees, right? And trees and plants are made of cellulose. So, and the cellulose has, it's like little, almost like little tubes inside. That's how the water gets up the plant. And so that cellulose pulls the water. It's called capillary action. And it separates and blends the colors on the paper. And the second part was the simple circuits. So it's a closed loop of a conductor that electrons can travel around. So the conductor in this case is the wire, has a power source, that's our battery, and then the electrical component or device like the light bulb. So you made a circuit. So when you go, when you're at home, look around your house and see if you can find other circuits that are around your house. Remember, it has to have something that conducts the electrons or moves the electrons around, has to have a power source, and it has to have something that it turns on, like a light bulb or a bell or a buzzer or a fan. There's lots of different things, okay? All right, well, you take care, and we will see you next time on Full. Steam ahead. This is Miss Kim saying bye-bye for now.